And we're going to go to the PowerPoint. And there. Okay, now I'm on the screen. I'm still taking. Can you hear me? Nancy can hear me. The people, the like yeah. few people I can see can hear me. Okay. Yes, so let's get rolling on this thing. Um, so what we're going to do, um, I forgot what I told you, but we're going to focus on shorebirds of North Beach. I picked this because that's what most of the folks are here are from Seabrook Island, and that's where you're going to do a lot of your shorebirding. This is not all of the birds that you'll see in the East Coast or South Carolina or east of the Rocky Mountain. I will make mentions of those, but this was going to really focus on the birds of North Beach so that you can go out tomorrow, many of you, and practice. Um, so what I hope, just be real, realize that that's the case. Now what I do want to do is I'm hoping that I can give you a some tools that will help you narrow down the birds that you're looking at so that you can identify them more easily. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this thing work. There we go. First question is what is a shorebird or a waiter? If, in your, in your, if you're in Europe, they're called waders, not shorebirds. You've got five families of birds that are those. Don't worry about those names. They don't mean anything. Generally, they're thin-billed and long-legged. They're frequently found on open shorelines, not always, and they usually forage by picking and probing. So before we go there, a lot of people are on uh, North Beach looking at birds and they're wondering, is this a shorebird? Well, let's look at some things that are not shorebirds. For starters, waterfowl are not shorebirds, like bufflehead. This is not wading, it's swimming in the water, it's looking for food in the water, it's not uh, um, a shorebird. Black scoters found out on the ocean. Once again, in the water, they're not waders. They're not long-legged. Or common loon, waterfowl. And this is just a bunch of the different waterfowl, um, a few of the different waterfowl. So waterfowl, we rule them out. Other things, black skimmers. A lot of folks think black skimmers are uh, shorebirds. They are not, they do not feed on the shore. They are skimming through the water and picking up fish. They are more closely related to gulls. Yes, you will see them with the shorebirds on the beach resting. They are not technically shorebirds, so we're not gonna be covering them too much. Gulls, gulls are always on the beach with the, the shorebirds. The laughing gull right now, very, very common all over the place. You've got the, the adult pictured here and immatures. Gulls can be really confusing because they have, um, my internet connection's unstable. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, the, the gulls um, have multiple plumages. You can see here we've got the Bonaparte skull almost in, a, in uh, <clears throat> what's called <clears throat> alternate or breeding plumage. And the one on the lower uh, right is in uh, the non-breeding plumage or the primary plumage. <clears throat> they look very, very different. Gulls also go through many, many years of growing. The ring bill gull takes a couple of years. This is the first year immature gull, radically different looking than the adult. The herring gull, first year herring gull, very different. They go four years, so they've got two different plumages per year. Over four years, you've got them looking eight different ways at least and the greater blackback gulls. Gulls are a completely different story. They're in a whole nother lecture, another program. We're not going to deal in them too much. What is not a shorebird? A terns are not a shorebird. They do not pick up from the shoreline. They drop into the water for the most part. The most common, of course, being the forester's tern. Um, if you look at the forester tern, at the, most of the year it's got a black eye. It's, when it's breeding plumage, it's got black on the, across the head. Um, with the forester's terms frequently on Seabrook Island, you're going to see royal terns. Royal terns, big orange bill. Most of the year, they've got a white forehead and they wear this crown. Think of the crown when you think of royal terns. It's like C uh, Nero's, Caesar's crown. Um, that's how I did. The next one, the Caspian tern, always has some black on the head and a bright red bill. We're not going to spend much time on it. 
And of course, the least tern, which fortunately did not have any breeding on uh, Seabrook Island this year, though we gave it a noble try. Herons are not shorebirds. They are waders. They feed on the shoreline, but they are not shorebirds. In fact, you rarely see them on the beach at, at North Beach. Um, snowy egrets, great egrets, tricolor herons, whatever. What are shorebirds? Shorebirds are daunting, but they're not impossible. You can look at that and go, oh my lord, how am I ever going to tell they're all just brown things with long legs and bills? How am I ever going to sort those out? Those? We're going to help you do that today. So one of the things you want to do is you want to look first at size and shape of the bird. This is critical. Forget color. Forget all those things that you look for other birds. You want to be looking at size and shape. So here we have a picture with three different size birds. One great big huge job here, a lot of small ones there, and a couple of gulls. But look at the size difference. Okay, once we see something that big and this small, we can put those into some buckets that help us to narrow down our options. And that's what we are going to do today, create these buckets or areas for you to be looking at so that you can narrow down your options and make better choices. So, huge and smaller. Here we have some birds that are really small, brown, white belly, brown, white belly. But look at the shape and the bill. This a long bill, a short bill. Okay, this bill characteristic is really, really important. This is what's going to help you identify what you're, what you're looking at. Each shorebird has a bill specifically designed for it to catch and feed on the food it likes. So each bird is going to have a slightly different shape of bill, and that's going to be one of our keys. Also, what we can see is we can have brown with yellow legs, brown with yellow legs, but once again, tiny, big, straight bill, straight bill. These are very different because we can see the size. This is a big one, here's a little one. So size is important. Now you're not going to, if you see a lone bird, you're not going to be able to do size, but by learning some of the birds, you're going to be able to figure out comparisons. So when you, even when the bird is flying, like, if I can get my mouse to work. Um, even when a bird is flying, you can tell. You see the one, one flying in this image? It's, it is a short, long build. Here we have a short build. Unfortunately, that's kind of hidden by the screen. The screen but, um, see the difference in build? That's quite visible when these birds are flying by you um, with practice. Size can be very deceptive. So we want to be thinking in terms of percentages. So here we have two birds. We have a bigger bird and a smaller bird. This one very pale, little black right here, which is a really diagnostic black mark. We got this one here with a short bill. What we have is we've got a sanderling. Now the sanderling can be used one of our benchmark birds. It is about eight inches in size. The semi-palmated plover is from five to eight inches in size. The smaller one is, is up to 25% smaller. Look at the difference in the size. That 25% is actually very visible when we've got birds next to each other. Learn, looking at birds and beginning to understand relationships, size, comparisons, this is going to enable you to be much better at identifying your short birds. Here we have two very similar birds. Oh boy, this, let's see if I can, can I move this? Bob, you can drag the- There we go, I just made it, so what's this, Nancy? There we go. Um, so what we have here, we've got two birds that are brown, white belly, long black bills, curved down, both of them very similar, but look at the size difference. We have got um, the Western Sandpiper, which is hiding behind the screen cherry, and the Dunlin. The Dunlin is 30% larger. When you see Dunlins, which is also one of our benchmark birds, when you see a Dunlin and you see a Western Sandpiper, you're 
they are going to be obviously two different birds, though to many people they look alike in this breeding, in this plumage. So what we have is we're going to create buckets. There are shapes, there are the unmistakable. On North Beach, we have the American oyster catcher. Nobody should confuse the American oyster catcher with anything else out there. This is the only bird that looks like this. It's the only bird that's got that big, big orange bill, black and white bird. It is very distinctive. It's unmistakable. You can't misidentify that. In that group, we're not going to cover them because they don't show up on Seabrook Island. Our American Avocet and Black Net still, still very distinctive birds, unmistakable. Um, learn those and you're, you're in good shape. Then we get the big, tall shorebirds. These are big shorebirds. And they are also have this, you know, unmistakable characteristic. Brown, yep, that's pretty characteristic of them. But this particular bird, look at that bill sweeps down and curves up it's two-tone color in this picture is nice but you know color you don't want to depend upon it when you're looking at these shorebirds but that upturned bill is great i think of it up towards god god wit um so that helps me to understand when we've got a god wit big bird with an upturned bill a big bird with a downturned bill Wimbrel. This is a wimbrel. Um, they, whoop, let's go back. The wimbrel has got the down curved bill. You might see this. Um, DeVoe Bank is a huge and very important stopover for this particular species of birds in the springtime. And you'll see dozens, if not hundreds, of these. They also like to be in the marsh as much as they like to be on the shore, on the, on the beach. Um, when I say that they're big birds, they are big birds. These three are wimbrels. These birds here are all about eight inches tall. These are medium sized shore birds. Look at the diff, these wimbrels stand head and shoulders, as a matter of fact, stand whole body over top of the uh, other birds. They're huge. You'll see them. If there are any other birds around, you'll recognize right away that they are big. And that's going to help you put those birds into that category. In this category, which we don't get, are also Hudsonian Godwit and Longbill Curly. Um, we're not going to look at those today. But remember, we'll look at the, the, the three tall ones. Then the next bucket I like to cover is the plovers. Plovers are all have a characteristic shape. They all have fairly short bills. Now I'm going to talk about a ratio of head width to bill length. This becomes important on a lot of shorebirds. And this particular one, we see that this bill is about half of the width, the width of the head. It's a short bill. Here we have a nice brown mud colored with a brown or black band on the chest. So this is a plover. This is a semi-palmated plover. Um, and it is a small bird. It is only about 7.25 inches. So this is a small bird. Also a small bird is a piping plover. Also very short bill, half of the head. The difference in this is not the, necessarily the color, it's the shade. This is the color or shade of sand. The semi-palmated plover is a shade and color of mud. It tells you a little bit about where they, they nest. These piping plovers are going to nest in the sandy areas, um, on, on beaches up in other parts of the country. Um, so this is also same size, 7.25 inches. You see these together on North Beach. You look, you see the dark brown ones, the pale white ones. Bingo, you've separated those two. Looking at the short bill, the band across the chest, and you know you've got a plover or plover, depending on who you want to talk to. Um, the next one is the black belly plover. Once again, its bill is larger, it's almost the width of the head, but it's still short and fat. It's a big bill on a 
big bird. This is a large bird. Um, so that's very characteristic. The black belly plovers do go through a plumage change. This is what they look like in the winter, but come, and they are 11.5 um, inches, which means that they are about 40% larger than the other two plovers we looked at. That's significantly larger. If you're looking around, you're going to see them standing above all the other birds. In the summertime, they're stunning. You get to see how they got their name of black belly clover. And they're, they are this, almost all my pictures were taken from North Beach. So you will see them looking like this. The last of the plovers that, that are usually found on North Beach is the Wilson's plover. And look at this bill. This bird is this, almost the same size as the semi palmated plover. It's the same color, it's the same pattern, stands a little more right, but look at that bill. It is a big honking bill compared to the semi-palmated plover. This is huge. You can see that bill from quite a distance and you can see it's big. That'll help you separate this, that bird from the other plovers. Um, and these are nesters. The other ones are uh, migrants or winter visitors. This one will nest. On Seabrook, in Seabrook Island. So let's review. Semi-palmated plover, brown back, short, stubby bill. Piping plover, whiter back, short, stubby bill. Pale or, and a lit pale, but a bigger, but still, still short, stubby bill. And very similar to this one, different posture, but look at the size of that bill compared to that bill. That should not be, you should not be confusing those. All right, so there is one very common plover on Seabrook Island, usually not on the beach, and that's the killdeer. These are more likely to be seen in the lawn around Palmetto Lake. Over, they nest over by the maintenance area and the ponds over there. Um, these like grassy areas, they're not necessarily in the marsh. They'll be around the horses and places like that. But the big difference on this one, it's very similar, heavy, short bills, heavy, short bill, not fat of the head, two black bands on a brown body bird. Um, very distinctive killer and very noisy. They're usually saying their name. Other plovers that you're not going to see, we're not going to cover today, are American gold plover. What I want you to do is I want you to be getting used to the ones there then so that, that you can see regularly. Then you can go and study these things. Um, these are fairly rare and they like grassy areas. I'm not going to find them on the beach. This is going to be found on the Gulf Coast or out west. This is going to be out in the mountains. You're not going to see them here. So why, should, why waste our time studying? So we're going to go to the next category of what birds. These are the large birds with long legs. All these birds are going to be about 15 inches in size. And look at this one, brown, tall, heavy. Look at that bill. That bill is big and stout and straight like a chisel. Big, straight, heavy all through here. Very distinctive, loves the beach. The willets, very common. They nest in the Seabrook Island. Um, they nest in around to here. Um, there are other characteristics. This is the eastern, there's a western. Actually, in the wintertime, what you get is western willets. But let's not worry about that because regardless of whether it's eastern or western willet, it's going to have this shape. And that's a willet shape. Pair that to the greater yellow legs. This bird is almost the same size height. But it's not a robust fat bird. This is a sleek, slender bird compared to the willow. But look at that bill. It's also slender compared to the willow. Really important, right here, you see that little kink right there where it goes up, right here and here. This bill has a kink in it, which with the binoculars doesn't show up very well in photos. It's really easy to see. But it gives this bird the appearance of an up 
turned bill. Nowhere near as abrupt as the Godwit, but it has an upturned bill. But it's still uh, thin, but it's fairly fat right in here, upturned bill. Lesser yellow legs, look at that bill. It is straight and it is thin. It's not fat in here. It's very thin bill bird. So that's going to be the characteristic. Lesson rare, let's compare them. Side to side, I'm sorry about that one over there, but um, greater yellow legs, 14 inches. Lesser yellow legs is 10 and a half. If they are standing side by side, it's a 30% difference. You will not mistake those. If you're looking at one standing by itself and is closer to size of uh, uh, black belly plover, say, or closer to size height of a willy, you'll be able to tell the difference between these. When they're standing by themselves, they're very, very difficult. That beak characteristic right there and right there, that beak shape is more important than anything else. The yellow legs are great. Um, they usually stand out, but you'll see there are times when they're covered with mud and they don't show up as well. Um, so once again, don't depend on the color. In the large long-legged birds, you can add the upland sandpiper, not something you're right likely to see in our, the area we're at. This is also a grassland species. So let's compare the long legs. Will it? Okay. Big, fat bill. Greater yellow legs. It's upturned bill, nowhere near as robust as the Willet's bill. And less yellow legs, a little like pencil lead, thin bill. This one happens to be, if you happen to notice, there's a bubble of water there. A lot of times they'll grab something and they're in a bubble of water and then they'll open their bill and capillary action will drag that bubble and the food that's in it up into their, their throat. It's kind of a neat behavior caught there. So we have small birds with long legs. Um, and this one, the spotted sandpiper, you don't see it on the beach that often, though this picture was taken on North Beach, so I felt I needed to include it. It's far more common that you're going to find this particular bird back in the, the marshes along the uh, waterways, along streams, along still lakes, along in the maintenance area, but occasionally they end up um, on the beach. Um, the big thing is this bill, this is a fairly small bird, but that bill is straight and it's equal to the width of the head. It has an eye line, um, but it also has the behavior of bobbing up and down, dipping its tail. Um, spotted sandpiper um, in, in the um, breeding plumage or alternate plumage, they live up to their name. Okay. So in this category, this is the one that's kind of the smaller but long legs. There are a bunch of them that don't show up very often on North Beach, but are found in South Carolina or here around where I'm at. Solitary sandpiper, stilt sandpiper, pectoral sandpiper, buff breasted sandpiper. I put the purple sandpiper in here. Um, I'm not, I just put it in there. But those are birds. Once you've gotten the idea of these, look, getting this bucket of medium sized birds with um, long legs, then you start sorting through these also. Now we're going to get into the medium, mid size, medium size birds, what I call the plumps with long bills. Look at the length of the bill of this thing. This is a short billed dowager, and it is short compared to long billed dowager. We take the width of the head, we go one, two, and a half. The bill length is about two and a half lengths of the bill. Now, bill length is variable. Sometimes they're shorter, sometimes they're longer. It can be up to three, it can be as low as two. Um, but this is a long bill dowager. This is the one you're most likely to see on North Beach. Um, they are tolerant of salt water. The long bill dowagers are not tolerant of salt water. They just don't like it. So this is the one you're most likely to see on Seabrook Island. Um, they feed like a sewing machine up and down, up and down, 
um, very characteristic behavior. They are called long, they can be, they do have long legs, but more often than not, they're standing in water or sitting on their legs and you can't see them. In this group is also the long-billed dowager, uh, Wilson's snipe, which is another bird that you'll find more in the marshes or in the um, horse pasture. I've seen them in the horse pasture, I've seen them in the drylands, or the American woodcock. Um, not beach birds, but these are mid-sized plumps. Um, so we get into the small plumps. And this is definitely a plump little bird. And it's got, look at that bill. One, two times the length of the head, but look how it curves down, especially towards the tip. Brown back, brown head, white, just, just the plainest bird you can look at, but it's got that down curved bill. This is the Dunlin. The Dunlin is about eight and a half inches, and we will use this particular bird as a base for size. You know, they're very common in the winter time, and they're fairly common the most year round. Um, so this is a good comparison. Get used to looking for that bill shape. Get very familiar with this bird so that it can, you can then recognize the other birds when you see them. In the summer or breeding or alternate plumage, they are very, very different. The hunters used to call these redbacks, but they get their black belly, um, the bright red back. But this characteristic bill shape doesn't change. This is what you want to be looking for. You don't want to be looking for this. Oh, yeah, when you see it, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. But that's not what you're looking for as a diagnostic uh, single uh, key because it could look like that. You want to be looking at that bill shape because this doesn't change. Get familiar with that. More plumps are red knots. And Seabrook Island is just fabulous. A nice plump bird, but look at this bill. Remember the Dunlin long bill? It's almost two times the head. This is just one times the head. It's the same size of the head. And it is straight, poker straight. The red knots in the wintertime are just plain old gray birds. Rest of the world, if you go wandering around look and you find a red knot, you'll find one or two or a few, maybe 20. Seabrook Island's wonderful because you can see 20, 100, 4,000 which we did earlier this year. We had 4,000 there one day and we documented them, which was, I think, about 10% of the uh, total population of these birds. So the red knots, very characteristic in Seabrook, really just looking for huge flocks of birds, but larger, straight bill, gray bird, until they go into the breeding plumage. Oh, it's 10 and a half inches or 25, 20 to 25% larger than Dunlin. So if you see them around Dunlins, the Dunlins are gonna look small compared to them. Um, and when they go into breeding plumage, they are just live up to their name. Um, by the way, this color right here in the bird world, that's red. I know it doesn't look red, but that's red. So this is the red knot. Many of them are tagged. I know Mark and I and uh, Ed and I uh, have spent hours and hours trying to get pictures of these tags and sending them in, and it's really a fascinating. And bands or flags, get pictures of them and submit them because it's really fascinating to learn where these birds have been and where they are, where they um, where they were banded. Red knots. The other plump that we have in the area is <clears throat> this one here, which is um, the ruddy turnstone. Plump, smaller. Look at that bill, though. It's even smaller than the head, and it's shaped like a wedge. Very wedge shaped. Now, this characteristic here is very obvious on a ruddy turnstone. But, and you'll see that and you'll go, oh yeah, ruddy turnstone. But when you're looking at a ruddy turnstone, I want you to look at the bill so that you can compare it to other things. Look at the length of that bill. It's not as long as the head and it's wedge shaped. 
This is another bird when it goes into breeding plumage. It's, it's a little bit larger than the Dunlin. Not much, just 15%, but you'll see that you'll see them next to the Dunlin's a little bit larger. When they get into breeding plumage, they are just stunning. stunning. And that red or ruddy color is where they get their name. But here's a real good picture of that chisel white bill. This bill is designed for turning over stones, turning over shells, looking for food underneath things. All the other birds are probing, looking for food in the mud. This one's flipping over, rooting through the, the, the weeds, rooting through the shells, rooting through the debris, flipping over, looking for things underneath us. Completely different behavior. Well worth watching and enjoying. So let's review the plums. Our benchmark, Dunlin, with this long D curve bill. We have the red knots, they're slightly bigger, about 25% bigger. Straight bill, not as long. And we have the ruddy turnstone, smaller than this, about the same size as that. Wedge, small wedge shaped. Not rounded and stubby, stubby like a plover, it's wedge shaped. So this is that one. So now we are getting into the peeps. The peeps are the bane of bird watchers. This is why lots of people call them beeps. Uh, but they are doable sometimes, not all the time. Um, I put the sanderling in with the peeps because it often hangs around with them. Uh, the sanderling, technically, if you look at the field guides where they list peeps, it's not one of the peeps. But I consider the peep because it's a very similar size. It's the largest of the peeps. Um, it's very similar in shape, and we'll want to use the shape to help separate it. They are in the most of the year. They're very, very pale. These are these pales of our shorebirds with the long bills. The piping plovers are pale also, but they've got that short, stubby bill. So the long bill in a pale bird, you're looking at uh, the the sanderling. Okay. It's a fairly straight bill. It's got a little bit of curvature. It's fairly straight. It's got a little bubble here. The big thing here is the behavior. It's moving. Every picture I take of these darn things, they're moving. Um, this is my mentor told, described these as the birds that bring in and out the tide. They're the ones that run in with the water, picking up things, run out of the water. Water follows them out. They push it back in. They follow the water, follows them back out. Um, they're running along the shoreline now. They get confusing when they're resting, and they're easy to confuse with some of the other people. One of the things, there's this little bit of black right here, which is very characteristic. Now, I've said that the sanderling is the lightest of all the shorebirds. It's eight inches. It's slightly smaller than the Dunlin. It's also the darkest of all the shorebirds. This is a breeding plumage sanderling. The irony is these two pictures were taken on the exact same day on North Beach, May 5th this year. Both of these birds are there, were there at the same time. But this bill, this running behavior is not going to change. This shape, this is very characteristic. Don't let the coloration fool you. What that, what can that compare to Western sandpipers? Um, the Western sandpiper, where's my here it is. As a plump little bird, these are small, small birds. Plump. It's got a football play, football player's neck. In other words, no neck at all. Um, it's just this really thick, heavy neck, stubby head. But look at this bill. It's at least as long as the head, maybe one and a half times. At least, that's important, at least as long as the head. And towards the tip, it curls down. This bows down. It's paler, thick-necked, round, plump, fat bird with a down-curved bill. Can't be confused with the Dunlin. This we saw them together earlier. The size difference is radical. 
you see them, you're going to know the difference between them. So don't, don't confuse that with dung. This is small. It is only 6.5 inches. It's 30% smaller than a Dunlin. That is significant. You will notice that easily. So I want to, I'm going to try to do something here. It's not going to show up very well, but I want to show something because it is important. Come on, computer. Let's see if I can get you to work. Come on. There we go. Maybe it'll, I'm going to open up this really cool uh, website. And this is called an eBirds. Um, if you're not familiar with eBirds, you can go on it. You can type in the name of a bird. I've typed in Western Sandpiper. And you can get a map of where these birds go. Now, this is not going to show up because I'm going to go through it piece by piece really slowly, but I want you to look here. You see that little bit of purple? There is a hint, just a hint. I wish I could blow it up, but then I can't move. It. There's a hint of color right here on January, January 10th. These things are around. They get to be more common. It's got a little bit brighter right there. Towards hey, the uh, yes? We're not seeing the eBird map. We're still seeing the presentation. Hmm. We see the ah, well, I'll just skip it then. Okay. Because we can do without it. It's not a big deal. Okay. Let's go back to my Zoom. Was it on a different, um, well, not a different tab, but a, a different browser? Yeah, yeah, it was. So okay. You have to use the same browser because um, you're screen sharing. So you can change the screen that you're using. If you go up and uh, I'll, just, I'll just do it this. Okay. Hopefully it'll there we go. We're back to where we were. It's not important. What was going to show you, it was very, very difficult to see. I'll explain that in a few minutes because we get to this bird. Western sandpiper, plump, fat thing, down curve bill, no neck. Sleeker, darker, has a prominent neck. That bill is at no larger than the width of the head. It's a shorter bill. It has a slight curvature to it, but it is fat and tubular. Often it'll have what looks like a bead of mud or uh, water on the end of it, just a fat, blunt tip. This is a semi palmated sandpiper. It is just about the same size, slightly smaller quarter of an inch, you're not going to notice it, so it looks very, very similar to the Western Sandpiper. Um, the semi-palmated Sandpiper is, in the winter time, these birds are in South America. These are never seen in North America during the winter. They migrate through in great numbers. They're here in our area, in Jersey and Delaware, in huge numbers right now. Um, as they're migrating through. They will eventually end up along the Argentina coast, and we will not see them here. If you see a bird in the wintertime, and it's a small thing, it's going to be a western. The maps that I was trying to show you that didn't work um, would show you that there is a window of time in the spring and the fall, um, and right now in the summer as the birds are coming through, where the, both of these will be likely to be seen or potentially be seen. But come the middle of October, this bird will be gone. If you see a peep with a long, like this, you're going in the winter time, you more than likely have either the Western or this one, which is the least sandpiper. It's slightly smaller than the semi-palmated. It's sandpiper is six inches, fairly insignificant. But look at the shape, dark brown, dark here, yellow legs. I've got a picture that just drove me absolutely crazy of a leaf sandpiper with gray legs. It drove me crazy. Do not count on this. If you see it, diagnostic. But it doesn't mean it's always there. But this shape is always there. That bill fairly straight on the top and a nice curve 
all the way through the length of the bill. This curves the length straight. Remember the Western and the very short, it's only the size, less than the size of the head. The Western was larger than the head and curled down at the tip. So this is very different. This one tends to like, well, you'll see them on the beach, but they tend to like it drier, more likely to be seen on the muddy areas. So the least sandpiper. There are two other sandpiper peeps, the Baird sandpipers, grasslands, and the white rump sandpipers. This is, tends to be in freshwater. I don't know, I've never seen one. I've seen plenty of them over at uh, um, Bear Island. Um, but I'm not going to confuse you with them at this point in time because we're focusing on the rough beach. Um, there are a few other birds. We're pretty much done looking at all of our birds. We're, we're, the, the, there are a couple other odd small sh sh odd shore birds, the red fowler, redneck fowler, the Wilson fowler. I've not seen reports of them on North Beach, um, but you want to look at those sometimes. They have an interesting behavior. Um, these, some of them, the red and redneck, are actually out on the ocean, floating around on the ocean. Um, they don't behave like shorebirds. They're also um, manic when they're feeding. So let's review the peeps. Sanderly, fast moving, pale color or very dark color, straight bill, black here is important to notice. Um, the western sandpiper, brown, curve more to the tip, long bill, no neck bird, semi-palmated, sleeker necked, short billed, and fairly straight and tubular. And finally, the least, which is brown, brown, and this decurve through the length of the bill, fairly straight on the top, but nice curvature through the bottom. And if you can see them, Wonderful, the yellow legs. Okay, so what we've done is I've gone through a lot of birds with you, but I've hopefully given you some groups of birds that you can now use to help you sort through them. I want you to ignore color. I want you to concentrate on shape and size. I want you to concentrate on the grouping, the unmistakable, the big, tall shrimp the plovers, the large long-legged, the mid-sized plumps, the plumps, and the small peeps. And those are the groups. Once you can start breaking them down into one of those groups, now you can start concentrating on, oh, here are the field marks that I need to be looking at to separate the various peeps or to separate the various plovers. First step, get it into one of these buckets so that you can eliminate all the worrying about all the others. So now it's time to practice. Nancy, here we're going to go. This is where we're going to start polling people, OK? Which birds are these? All, most of these pictures have got more than one bird. Do we have a Wimbrel and a black belly plover? Do we have a Wilson's plover and a Willet? Do we have a Willet and a black belly plover or a Dunlin and semi-palmated plover? So Bob, do you see the pole up? I do not see the pole. Oh no, oh, launch pole, okay. There we go. All right. So everyone take a chance and pick one of the four. So one person has answered. Oh, we're getting more people answering. You can see the, I can see the live polling. I think when we finish, we'll give each a, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't see it. But. No, but I can see the results. So we've got 13 people have answered, 14. So I'll wait till it gets up over half of the people. And uh, all right, just a couple more seconds and I will share the results of what you guys said. All right, I'm gonna end the poll with 21 people answering and I am going to share the results. All right, 43% of you got it right. Okay, Yay. so if you take that one off, we'll show you the difference. Okay, this is, these are big birds. Remember, this is a big plover. It's 
brown back. It doesn't have the band here. It's got the big bill, which I can see why you would confuse it with Wilson's. I'm going to show you a little something. I like this picture because that black axillary or armpit, the black belly plover is the only bird in this grouping that we've been looking at that's got that. You can see that when this thing flies by. That's diagnostic of the black belly plover. And it is a willet. It's got gray legs. It's got a heavy bill. That's kind of a funny picture of it because it's, it's um, at an angle. But it's big compared to a plover. So much bigger um, than the, um, it's nowhere near as wimble, like down curve, and much, much bigger. The dunlin is smaller than the black belly plover. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. See if it'll work. There we go. Next one. Which of these? Do we have a piping plover, sanderling, and dunlin? Oops, I'll move that to the side so you can see them. Is it a semi palmated plover, sanderling, or dunlin? Is it a semi palmated plover, dunlin, or sanderling? Um, I'll get those two in there twice. Oh well. <laughs> um, and let's do them in order. Oh no, stop, sanderling. Okay, semi-palmated plover dunlin or western sandpiper. Okay, um, I got the two of the same, didn't I? No, oh, that's interesting. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That so, might have been my fault, Bob. What's that? That might have been my fault when I was. Nah, that's me. That's no question about me. I I goofed that one up. <laughs> but let's do them in order. This one, this one, this one. <laughs> okay, what's that one? What's that one? What's that? One? <laughs> And we'll wait till we got some answers. All right, I just shared the results. Okay. All right, thirty eight percent of you tied, but what we're doing here, and I'll you can get, it's the semi palmated plover, Dunlin, and the Western Sandpiper. Well, let's get rid of this so I can go through them why this is this is correct. So we know we've got the brown back short bill. We've got a semi palmated plover. Remember when we talked about the thirty percent difference in the size of these things. These look the same, both down curve bill, but this is much larger. 30% larger than this one, no neck, down curve bill, down curve bill, more towards the tip on these things. So we've got semi palmated plover, Dunlin, and Western sandpiper. Okay, all right, let's try the next one. There we go. Just two in this one. We have a piping plover in Sandlin, a semi palmated plover in Sandlin. A semi palmated plover and Donlin, or a semi palmated plover and piping plover. Boats are coming in. Wait a couple more seconds. All right, I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. All right, hey, more than half of you, that's excellent. Those of you who aren't getting right, don't be frustrated. Don't, be, don't let this frustrate you. This is part of the learning process. We all make mistakes and we're gonna talk about what's going on. And I can show you what's happening here. Um, this is dark back, therefore we know it's not a piping plover. Remember, piping plover is the color of sand. This is the color of mud. So this tells me we've got a semi-palmated plover. Um, this is a sanderling because it's very, very pale. I can see it does look like it's got a bill that curves down, but this is really, really pale, which is why I put piping plover in here, just to confuse you. But it's got a bill that's going to tell us it's either a sanderling or a dunlin, but the fact that it's pale, and this bill is just the size of the head and doesn't droop down dramatically. Tells us we have a sanderling. Also, look for this little black spot here on the sanderling. 
Okay. All right. How many species do you see? Don't name them yet. You'll get your chance. But how many species do you see? Two, three, four, or five. Okay, so ignore the question at the top and answer two, three, four, or five. I realized I made a mistake in typing this one up. So here you go. How many species are there? Maybe I'll put it on the other side. Maybe it'll fit on. That's better. Looking at bill shape, bill size of these birds, figure it out. Okay, I'm going to end the poll and share the results. All right, very good. You guys are paying attention to bill shape and bill size. I like it. Okay, you can, you can close that. What we have, we've got long bills here of the short billed dowager. We've got the straight bill of a gray birds of the red knot. Oops, and I'm giving away the answers here, aren't I? Let's, let's not, let's, let's go to the next page because the next page asks you to identify them. There you go. <laughs> or we have black belly clover, short bill dowager, red knot, ruddy turnstone, black belly clover, red knot, dunlin, semi palmated clover, semi palmated clover, dunlin. Red knot, ruddy turnstone, or black belly clover, red knot, millet, and ruddy turnstone. Have at it, folks. All right, the results are in, and here they are. All right, and very good, very good. Um, we have the black belly plover, short billed dowager, red knot, and ruddy turnstone. So what we have here. Um, so we're going to get rid of that. So here, looking at the bill, look at the length of that bill, at least two and a half times the length of the head. This tells us we're looking at. Uh, the um, um, short billed dowager. We look at this bill, which is sh uh, shorter than the head, big, fat, stubby thing, gray back. We've got the black belly plover in the front. There we go there. And then we've got the sh small gray birds, shorter bills here, the red knots, another um, short billed dowager. And then this one wedge shaped bill, with this black here, we've got the ruddy turns to me. So A was the correct answer. All right, last, I think this is the last one. It, yes. What, what do we have here? Is this a semi palmated plover, piping plover, sanderling, or black belly plover? Wait a few more seconds. And I think most of you have voted, so I'm ending the poll. And here are the results. Yay, very good, very good. A piping plover. Um, most of you got that one. A short plover bill, which tells us it's not a sanderling, so we've got a choice between these other three plovers. Black belly plover, the bill would be large, almost as large as the head. So we ruled it down to piping plover, semi palmated plover, sand color versus mud color. This is going to be the piping plover. Excellent job, folks. Now, this whole idea is to give you some experience and practice. This, I, this can't make you an expert. Um, that's not my goal. My goal here today was to get you exposed to these things so that when you go out there, you can start at least breaking these down into these categories of buckets of the various different types of birds. 
Um, and that will then help you sort through. I want you to start looking at the shape of the bird. I want you to start looking at the, the bill in particular and how they move and feed. And that is going to be um, what you want to be doing. Go out and practice. Don't get frustrated. No one can identify these birds correctly 100% of the time. Even the experts mess up. They will tell you that the best of the best can do them about 80% of the time. Um, so yeah, a lot of them will go by and just say, hmm, I don't know. It's perfectly okay. okay. Look at the shape, size, especially the shape and size of the bill. If somebody tells you they can do all these birds all the time, they're either a bald-faced liar or they're overly confident. Um, so it's something, it's just practice. After you've looked at 10,000 of these, it gets a little bit easier. Um, so go out and practice. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing your screen. And there we are again. Hi, folks. So let's see if anyone has any specific questions for you, Bob. Um, anyone out there have questions? You can feel free to unmute yourselves. I didn't notice anybody write any uh, questions on the chat. I would, like, I would like to say thank you. I thought this was terrific. Oh. Was really interesting. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you. Friends. Enjoyed it. Good. Uh, we had a couple more polls. So just a quick poll. Um, one of them is just asking, is this format working for you? Would you join future Zoom formats? And that's just a simple yes or no. So it looks like most people who made it on this um, event are willing to do this again, which is great news because we are planning some additional ones. So I'm gonna end this one. Um, the next question is, um, it's kind of a, a question of what we are planning to do in September, but we're wondering how many of you would be interested to come next month in September featuring Ed and Aya Conrad, and they're going to present their birding and history trip along the Lewis and Clark Trail. And we were kind of curious, okay, maybe it doesn't interest you, so you might be unlikely to join. Oops, I guess I have to share the poll. So unlikely to join might be interested, you'd probably come, you will join if it fits your schedule or you'll change your schedule to make sure that you can be at this next one. So Ed and I, it looks like uh, you can't cancel your plans, you're on. The majority of people would like to come, will change their schedule or it, if it fits their schedule. Um, what, if, what if they all said, no, we've already done the presentation. I, I, I was banking that this group would not do that. I was, I, I almost skipped the question. Just now, but, all right, one final question. Um, just kind of curious what other topics in this question, you can put, pick multiple choices. So I'm gonna launch the poll and read it to you. So for future events, um, we've thought about a piping plover specific presentation, migration related to Seabrook Island and where do they go when they're not at Seabrook, uh, fall migration for birds, raptors, whether it's hawks, eagles, owls. Mm -hmm. uh, what about beginning birding? Is anyone interested in beginning birding? Um, we've talked about bringing a presentation on native plants and birds. Um, another one is things that you can do at your home related to birding and a bird photography workshop. So take a moment to just click any of the ones that you are interested in. Um, and these are all real presentations that we've got ideas of who can give these. So we do appreciate your, your feedback, your comments. Um, while you're answering that, any other questions for Bob? And George and people who don't live down at Seabrook anymore, there's plenty of birding now, right now in your area. Sabrina, we'll get you out and look at lots of things. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't give the stats, but of the 86 people who signed up, we had a number, um, the majority was South Carolina. They would be sitting in South Carolina, but we had people who would be sitting in Maine, mm -hmm. uh, Canada. Yeah. Um, we had Virginia, North Carolina, Illinois, uh, Indiana. Mm -hmm. There was a few other states. 
So we really appreciate all of you joining tonight and participating and thanks for your feedback. Looks like Raptors is a, a big hit. Almost all of you said that you like to hear about the Raptors. Yeah. Um, so this is great feedback. It looks like most of them, at least a third of you are interested, but this will help us um, get some ideas of what to schedule for upcoming events. And I know I'm going to be able to save this, but just in case I take a picture of it. All right, I'm going to end the poll, share it with you because you haven't seen it. Um, so there are the results. Wow. Nice. Yeah, so thank you all for your feedback. Judy, do you want to say anything else? Well, I'd like to add one thing real quick. Yeah, go ahead. When, we, when we finally get down back to Seabrook Island, um, you know, I'll be out on the beach and be happy to lead walks and take people out and help you practice with these things. It's, it's a lot of fun and we can sit down and we can go over each of the birds as we look at them. So we, we'll be, I know we'll be there from early January to mid April. We'll probably be down there in sometime in November. And who knows, silly virus that's got us doing this type of stuff. We'll, when we get down there, we'll get down there. You'll, I'll let everybody know, I'll let the city know. So we can get out and do stuff, okay? Okay, hey, thank you, Bob, that was wonderful. I've learned a lot and I definitely need to practice a lot. So uh, thank <laughs> you for doing that. So uh, we hope to, as, again, as we said, have we've got several topics we have. If you've got some other ideas that you would like to have on some of these Zoom presentations, just send us an email or put a note in the chat session there. And because we'd, I think this is going to be our way of doing things for the next few months at least. So uh, look forward to seeing all of you again and thank you for participating. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A lot. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. All right, still. Okay. Good to see you. Good to see you, George. Good to see everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Great job, Bob. Thank you, and I, like, almost an hour, a little bit more. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit more, but we started about 10 minutes late at least. So you kept it to an hour. Good, very good. So how are you doing?